If you search YouTube for the best sleeping position, you'll generally be told two things. One, sleeping on your stomach is bad for your neck and low back. And two, you must sleep with a neutral spine. In this video, I'm gonna tell you why this advice is flawed and why sweeping generalizations aren't helpful. I'll start by answering the question, what is the most common sleeping position? There's quite a bit of research examining this in different populations, and it appears that sideline on the left or right is the most widely adopted sleeping position. There are various factors that may be associated with preferred sleeping positions, such as age, BMI, pain, and different health conditions. For example, sleeping on the stomach is extremely uncommon in older individuals. Why do I bring this up? Koenig et al. in 1992 determined that stomach sleeping ranges from 13.4 to 20.2% in 3 to 45 year olds. I also surveyed Instagram followers about their preferred sleeping position. 25% said right side line, 31% said left side line, 20% said supine, and 24% said prone. So if we take the advice of these YouTube videos, I'd have to tell one fourth of people in this demographic that they're sleeping wrong for no specific reason. Now, just like I don't think we should generalize what sleeping positions people should avoid, I'm also not advocating that everyone assume a prone position. There are sleeping positions that might be advantageous in certain populations, in certain scenarios, and I'll discuss practical recommendations toward the end of the video. Next question, how often do you move per night? Once again, this is going to vary, but the same study found that three to 45 year olds change positions 19.6 to 44.5 times per night with more changes occurring in the younger individuals. A different study by Kubota et al. in 2003 found that young, healthy men change positions approximately 32 times per night and adopted seven different sleeping positions. Why does this information matter? because it's literally impossible to maintain a quote-unquote neutral spine while sleeping. If you fall asleep and wake up in a similar position, that does not mean you stayed in that position the entire night. You're going to twist, turn, and move. It's completely normal. More on this later. Third question. Do certain sleep positions cause pain? Carry et al. 2016 found no association between sleeping position and spinal symptoms. Holdaway et al. in 2018 found no association between sleeping position and glenohumeral joint pain or rotator cuff tendinopathy. This includes lying prone with arms overhead. A survey study by Gordon et al. in 2007 found that the prone position was not associated with waking cervicothoracic symptoms, but an upright position was and sideline was protective. Admittedly, many of these studies use small sample sizes or have considerable confounding variables, and there are limitations with self-reporting. For example, many of the individuals in the Gordon study who slept in the upright position did so because of a medical condition and reported worse sleep quality. Similarly, the side sleepers had statistically significant better sleep quality than the others. It might be concluded that better sleep quality results in less symptoms upon waking. At this time, there's not enough research to suggest that a certain sleeping position is protective or a risk factor for neck, low back, shoulder, or arm symptoms. Can certain sleeping positions contribute to pain though? Sure. Have you ever bobbleheaded while asleep on an airplane? And I'm not discounting that you might have changed your sleeping position and ended up feeling better. But I imagine for every person who said they felt better after switching from their back to their side, there's probably an equal amount of people who said they felt better after switching from their side to their back. Last question. Should you avoid certain positions if you have pain? Maybe. There are many considerations for different body regions and diagnoses, but I'll give a few examples. If you have lateral hip pain, sleeping on that side might be painful and sleeping on the opposite side might be more comfortable with a pillow or two between the knees. If you're experiencing shoulder pain, you might also have pain sleeping on that side and feel better while resting your arm on a pillow while sleeping on the opposite side. If you have neck pain, especially with rotation to one or both sides, sleeping on your stomach may exacerbate those symptoms since you're staying in that provocative position for a prolonged period of time. 
And if you have low back pain associated with extension, sleeping on your stomach may also be uncomfortable because your low back tends to be more extended. This doesn't necessarily make any of these positions inherently bad. They might just need to be temporarily minimized or avoided because of your current symptoms. Let's summarize. You don't have to try to maintain a neutral spine when sleeping because it's physically impossible based on the number of times you move in your sleep each night. Also, humans aren't that fragile. Imagine surviving and evolving over hundreds of thousands of years, but not being able to sleep without a neutral spine and 12 pillows. If that setup helps you sleep well though, carry on. Sleeping on your stomach isn't inherently more dangerous for your spine. I'm not going to tell 25% of people who say it's their preferred position to stop without any good reason. Plus, there's plenty of us who prefer other positions but still end up on our stomachs from time to time. Older individuals might sleep prone less because less mobility makes it less comfortable or harder of a position to get into, or maybe if they have breathing or respiratory issues, it's not ideal. Which brings me to the next point. You might choose or avoid sleeping positions for very specific reasons, such as a health condition, and that's completely fine. For example, sideline is often recommended over supine for individuals with obstructive sleep apnea, and I already discussed how pain can influence your preferred sleeping position. But sweeping generalizations regarding the best sleeping position aren't helpful. We can't assume that everyone is going to respond well to the same two sleeping positions despite our unique differences and preferences. If modifying your sleeping position is helpful for whatever reason, I'm all for it. I'm just not a fan of some of the fear mongering that's shown in these videos. There's not always a quick fix, and there are so many other factors that may improve sleep quality and quantity, such as sticking to a regular sleep schedule, avoiding caffeine six to eight hours before bed, exercising and spending time in the sun each day, avoiding or minimizing alcohol consumption, and other factors. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please hit that like button, subscribe, turn on notifications, leave any questions or comments down below. Peace.